What's going on everyone, Meta Raven here and welcome back to another brand new server release video. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these and this one is quite special to me at least. I'm really looking forward to this one and it will have a lot of special things to cover in this video. The release is going to be Gauntlet, a brand new server on the 25th of June. It's currently the 18th of June, so let me just quickly disclaim that not everything seen in this video might be the exact same as it will be on release. They are still making uh, changes as they go for the next seven days. So that's something important to keep in mind. Not everything might be one on one with the actual release compared to how it's shown in this beta video. Because we are of course currently on the beta to showcase the actual server. We're currently at the home area. I specifically put it on resizable. I never actually do that but figured it would be a nice little quality of life to show off the home. Got all everything you need in here. All the shops and the prayer altars and all of that good stuff. But um, we'll go over a lot of different things. I do mainly want to focus on the actual interesting things. I don't want to show all the basic stuff you have seen on a million other servers and maybe they'll hire some other YouTubers that will go a bit more into the basic stuff. But I genuinely want to show you guys why I am so excited myself for the server. Um, if you look at my character right here, you can see there's quite a few interesting items that I have equipped. A weird black Festus longsword, some purple looking boots and a purple halo and all of that good stuff even Vestas. So let me first clarify, this is an old school RuneScape type server, but it does include customs. Not like miniguns and all of that crazy shit, but well thought out customs that fit within the game. And that is the big reason that I am so excited for this server. Um, honestly, old school RuneScape servers, we have seen too many of them and genuinely speaking, they are not that interesting at the moment anymore. I feel like we've all seen plenty of them, they're all the same, they all try to copy old school RuneScape to the best of their abilities, but the result of that is simply that you keep playing the same old servers that you've played a million times that represent old school RuneScape and have no creativity, no originality, nothing special to them, nothing that makes them stand out compared to the others. And that is where Gauntlet will really make a difference. But before we fully dive into the video, now that all the disclaimers out of the way, um, let's hop into the giveaway for this video first. Of course, the giveaway will be paid out after the actual release. Roll that clip real quick. All right then, my dudes, for this video, we're going to be doing four $25 bond giveaways to four different winners. If you want to enter that, all you need to do is, of course, subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment your in-game name down below, and turn on your post notifications. If you've done all that, you enter the giveaway. Wish you all the best of luck on that. If you want to try out Gauntlet when it releases for yourself, make sure you use the link at the top of the description. It helps me out a ton if you do. And, of course, make sure you join the Gauntlet, uh, the Gauntlet Discord and my own private Discord. The links for both of those will be in the description down below as well. Once you claim a bond, you will get a donator rank for it. Your uh, donator rank will update, so your new total, whatever that may be. And you can spend these donator tickets in the donator shop. But I'll cover more of that in this actual video. So let's not stick around too long and go right back to the main video. Alright, so with that being said and done, let's have a look at the actual features. Of course, this server does have full room light uh, implementation for whatever features you may use. I'm not too familiar with room light myself. It has all the basic stuff, you know, like drop indicators on the floor, item names, all of that good stuff. Uh, probably like uh, Cox uh, scouting and all of that shit. Like almost anything that I've seen up until now works the way it is meant to work. And it has some, it, it's nice, it's always good to see that room light fully works within the server that you try out and all of that good stuff. So that's pretty nice, but I won't dive too much into that because honestly, y'all know room light, you've seen it plenty of times. Let's look at the interesting stuff. Um, let's start by focusing on the inventory, but before I do that, I'm gonna go back to fixable real quick because it makes everything a little bit more overseeable for myself. Alright, there we go. Much, much better. This is how I prefer it. So, this server does have a lot of custom features and or items like I was mentioning. For example, we have this corrupted staff looking thing with a full necromancer set, which is from a custom boss that this server has, the necromancer boss. And I ain't talking about your average custom AFK stand around and just kill it type boss. No, it has its custom mechanics, custom ways of working, all of that good stuff. I'll definitely end up showing that one off during this video if you guys wait a little bit longer. They have the new Old School RuneScape um, kits, the uh, Holy Kit and the Sanguinesti Kit for the Scythe, Grazi, Rapier, even the Sanguinesti Staff, the little owl uh, version of it. 
They have um, cosmetic Twisted Bows, the Kodai and the Elder one. So they're literally just cosmetic, no actual uh, changes in the stats or anything like that. So pretty cool as well. We have an overloaded heart. I do not know if it works. Oh yeah, it does, it does. And it boosts your stats way higher than just a regular heart would. It doesn't actually work like an overload, because if I use a Saradomin Brew right now, for example, it would lower my stats. So although it's called the overload heart, it doesn't have the overload effect from the overload potions that we might know. It does have some custom cosmetics as well, such as this little summer party hat. A beautiful fused halo that we'll get into in just a minute. Primordial boots ornament, fused boots, um, lava dragon hide, which is actually from a custom wilderness boss. It's a, it's like a world event boss that spawns once every while. Actually, if we look at the chat over here, besides me spawning items, there are quite a few messages like the volcano has erupted, helps so do it uh, next time for blood money. Uh, when that happens, when it actually spawns originally, you can go to that place and you can start mining there and you can uh, earn blood money and a lot of cool stuff like that. Kind of like a mining star event, but it's in the wilderness and it's a little bit more dangerous and different rewards from the actual uh, falling star. But it has a lot of those things, so it's really, really cool to see that all together. I think there are some other things as well over here, like... Uh, there's been earthquake somewhere in Prifendas, uh, there's a sighting of a star, so there is an actual falling star. Um, the Brutal Lava Dragon is the one that actually drops this Lava Dragon Hide. You only have a certain amount of time to kill it as well, so that's really cool. Hopefully we'll be able to showcase that as well during this video. Um, of course, Vessa's Armor, Stadius, Morrigans, all of that good stuff, which are actually obtained by Larynkeys. I really like that. That makes Wilderness Slayer so much more worth it, just with such a small addition. So, you know, opening the uh, Laren skis in level 50, whatever, will the 53 or something, can actually get you the Zareels, Morrigans, all the PvP armor and gear and all of that good stuff, which is really nice. And we have a Bloodline Bow and a Bloodline Chain Mace. These are actually upgraded version of the Crossbow and the Vigorous Chain Mace, which are really fucking strong inside of the Wilderness. When you upgrade the weapon, it no longer requires charges to be used. Uh, which is already a, a huge upgrade in and of its own, but the damage increase is pretty fucking ridiculous as well. It's a, They are really good weapons, genuinely. Uh, of course, they can only use inside of the wilderness. When you use it outside of it, it doesn't have all of the bonuses, similar to a regular crossbow and vigorous chain maze. Now we have a corrupted orb, which is actually from Nightmare, and it's used to make a corrupted Nightmare staff. Pretty cool as well, really like the design of that, really nice item. Now we have a Ring of the Undead, Ring of the Beast, and Ring of Arachnids. And this is also a pretty interesting one. I personally um, suggested this to the owner, and that is something I really like about this. The dude I've been talking to, the uh, owner of this server, or one of the owners of the server, is extremely communicative. Like, he talks so much with, not just me, but like in his actual Discord, with all the people that are like beta testing it, putting in their ideas, all of that stuff. And he listens to it. He thinks those things out and he actually adds them, which are a massive, massive plus one for me. And then we have a Vampiric, which it's actually misspelled in the item name, but that has been reported and will be fixed soon enough. But Vampiric? Vampiric, I don't know how you pronounce that word in the first place, face guard, like an upgraded version of it. So a lot of these items are actually obtained by the upgrade table at home. Now this is one of those things where uh, the disclaimer at the start of the video comes in quite clutch. Not everything that you will see in this chest right now will be the same on release. For example, creation claws right here, which are from Dragon Claws, and the creation claw piece, which is actually obtained by killing the creation beast, which is another wilderness boss that uh, spawns every once in a while and like it has a chance to spawn and then you kill it with a whole team inside of the wilderness. Really, really cool stuff. And then it has a 15% chance to upgrade into Creation Claws, which is like an upgraded version of the Dragon Claws. Really cool as well, but at the moment it doesn't have a special attack yet, for example, so I can't show you that off. Same with the Bloodline Chain Maze and Bloodline Bow. These are going to be changed later, but the Bloodline Shard is basically going to be obtained from a variety of wilderness activities where you get different shard pieces. You make it into the shard and then you can go over here to enchant it into a Vigora well, with a Vigorous Chain Maze to make the Bloodline Chain Maze. It has a 10% chance to be upgraded, so it's really hard to be obtained. But then again, we don't know if it's gonna stay at 10% by the time it releases. Same with armor, you have a Vampiric Face Guard, Knight's Not Face Guard with a Blood Shard. That already gives Blood Shard so much more uses, because honestly, Blood Fury always kind of feels meh in most uh, games. 
from my experience. You sometimes may want to use it, but it's never really required. However, now it has an extra purpose with a 20% chance to enchant into a helm, which has a significant stats upgrade. I think this helm gives like 8 strength bonus or something ridiculous like that. Check real quick. 166, 158, yeah, plus 8 strength bonus, a really, really strong helmet right there. Fused boost, for example, 15 Primordials, Eternals, and uh, Pagation boots. I don't know if they're gonna change this, because this seems really extreme, because it is an economy server. So if I had to kill a fucking thousands of Cerberus to get all of these boots, plus, like, do medium clues for uh, Ranger boots and all of that, just to get a 5% chance to enchant 15 of them for one Fused boots, that seems a little too strong, so like I said, they might end up changing that overall. But you can also do 5 Primordial Boots for a 50% chance for a small upgrade to Primordial Boots, or I like those small things. It gives so much more goals and purpose and all of that good stuff inside of the game. Over here we have Miscellaneous, such as a Fused Halo. If you obtain all different Halos in the game, 30% chance to get a Fused Halo. Some decent stats, nothing crazy. Golden Flippers for Flippers and Gold Leaves. Really like that as well. Probably just cosmetic, but a nice little feature. Uh, max cape with 25 pk keys gives a cape of skulls 35 percent chance to upgrade gives more prayer bonus and some more uh, additional defense bonuses i believe the overload heart requires three imbued hearts i do not know if they have any plans to add like a like a melee and ranged version of the imbued heart but that would be cool to see as well and then these ring of the undead ring of the beats and uh, beast and ring of arachnids jesus the names man um, they are obtained by getting a imbued ring from Vadion Venonatus and Callisto and enchanting it with 5,000 blood money. Another thing I love because the regular rings are kind of meh in most servers, but this gives them so much more purpose on top of that. And the rings actually do have quite some uh, special abilities on top of that. For example, the ring of Arachnids helps with damage against spider type monsters. So from Venonatus to Sorachnids, but also to Coffet Queen, like insect type monsters, because just Sorachnids and uh, Venonatus weren't quite enough compared to the Ring of the Beast, which I believe for now boosts stuff like Callisto, Cerberus, Xopus, Giant Mole, Sotatsek in uh, TUB as well. Kind of like things that have a, a fur type skin rather than like uh, scales or anything like that. And Ring of the Undead of course boosts against undead type monsters such as Fadion himself. So they all have a team and I really like that as well. And then some PvP upgrades, there's only two items in there for now but I'm sure they'll add more. I was told the Cursed Banana is a placeholder, another one for the disclaimer, but uh, basically a way to upgrade a fastest longsword into an even stronger variant. Same with the Armadillo God Sword, upgradable to an AGS or pretty cool as well. I really like the upgrade table, I mean it's relatable enough, it's not like anything super innovative per se, we've seen this on plenty of servers before. Enchantment chest, enchantment table, upgrade table, it's all kind of the same. But what matters is what kind of enchantments are obtainable from it, in my honest opinion. Anyway, that's a lot of showcasing for just a very small part of the game. So let's go ahead and hop into some actual content, shall we? So I was talking about the Necromancer, which is a specific boss, which you preferably don't use magic on, but I just wanted to compare it real quick with Ancestral, so you guys get a bit of an idea. The full Necromancer set gives 69 magic bonus, very nice. A uh, bunch of defense bonuses as well, not bad at all, except it does give zero range bonus, which is probably deserved, I think that's the way it's meant to be. And then six magic damage as well, compared to Ancestral, which gives the same amount of magic damage, same amount of magic accuracy, but it has slightly lower defensive stats, so Necromancer is actually better than Ancestral. But in my opinion, it's probably quite a bit harder to obtain, because that boss is not an easy one whatsoever. Alright, so we're gonna do a little bit of testing against the actual Necromancer boss. It is not an easy one. I've tested a few times out before, and they had made some changes to it. Okay, my blowpipe is charged and all of that good stuff. Personally, ranging it has been my best experience, but I do not know everything about the game yet. It still has to release after all. The Lava Dragonite is actually really good gear. It does give ranged strength bonus on top of it. I can't take it off, but trust me, it gives ranged strength. Um, it's actually really good armor, but it's really hard to obtain on top of that. So um, you will probably be using Carols or Black Dragonite or something like that. But for showcase purposes, we're going to use this gear. And at the same time, I'll be able to show you guys what teleports look like. If we just do teleport, there we go. We can go to bosses, like everything is pretty organized, monsters, dungeons, bosses, mini games, 
There's a bunch of minigames as well. Asman Standing, Barrels, Five Caves, Puro Puro, uh, Warriors Guild, Winter Todd, Chambers, Theater of Blood, Pest Control. It has the full Infernal as well. Um, the Infernal is actually... It's the exact same as old school RuneScape, but the Rune-like plugins fully working make it a lot easier. It shows like the timing, like how much seconds are left until he launches a shot at you and all of that stuff. So, plus the fact that it has like a training option, so you could like just train Zuck if that's the one thing you're bad at. You could just kill Zuck over and over again or try to until you get the hang of it. Pretty, pretty cool. Really nice overall. But... That is not what I wanted to show you guys. Let's go to bosses and check out the Necromancer. Difficulty expert, not in the wilderness. Very cool. Nice little custom spot from it. I believe this is in Zaya, where they took a part of Zaya and made it like an instance place. I think it's an instance the moment you go into the barrier, but I'm not 100% sure. Of course, you do pray mage against this bad bitch and you want to use a blowpipe. I would recommend a fast hitting weapon for the skeletons that spawn every once in a while. What skeletons you'll see soon enough. I don't think we're going to show the whole full thing, but just until one of these skeletons spawn, you will notice by the fact that it will freeze me when it spawns one. That's when you want to equip the, like right there, it uses a freeze attack, spawns a little skeleton. You want to try and attack it at least before it gets to you. And then you will bring down that bar. If it fills up, it will explode on your ass and do a lot of damage. Very similar to like the um, little undead spawn at Vorkath. But that's not quite all. After a little while, we will start using a new attack where shit will fall from the sky. And that deals a lot of damage. It's unavoidable as well and it can hit up to an 58. The only way to survive that is literally by eating up. You see that little thing landing right there? There's no way to dodge it, especially if you're frozen. The only way to survive is straight up eating. That's why I bring Karamwams, which is not something I would normally do in a PVMing scenario. But... You could literally get stacked out by two of them at once. So there was a 44 right there. As you can see, it deals a lot of damage if you're uh, a little bit on the unlucky side. Straight up freeze again. God damn. It deals a lot, as you can see. Let's speed up the rest of the kill real quick to uh, just show you what it's fully like. Right, now that it has hit below 50% HP, you can even see that those things on the floor are starting to fall even faster. Now the worst part about this is, if you get unlucky, two of those will hit you at the same time and that just fucks you up, no joke. Look at that, straight get, look at that. <laughs> There's nothing I can do, genuinely, it's a really rough boss. And every time you die, you do have to go to home and pay like a, a cover to get your items back as well. Bro, I just got stacked up by three of them. <laughs> Didn't stand a chance. Th this is what makes this boss so incredibly rough. I also feel like perhaps it might be better to just stick to the twist bow over, or sorry, for to the blowpipe overall. It costs uh, one mil cash to unlock and then I can get my items back. Because honestly, the twisted bow doesn't seem to deal that much damage against it. Or better said, it hits too many zeros. You would think that it has high magic ac or magic offense. So you would deal a lot with the tw Twisted Bow, but it just did not work out that well. And then you get fucked by those 44s at the end. I don't know if they're gonna make any more changes to it. Maybe like some sort of safe uh, protection that makes it so they don't land in the same area, same square within a certain amount of time. I do not exactly know what their plans are for that. But as you saw, it can, it can fuck you up really fucking fast. Undoubtedly, one of the harder bosses in the game. Anyway... Um, I really hope they make some changes to it. But if we go over here to the bestiary, you can actually look up certain uh, monsters and whatnot. So, for example, the Necromancer boss right here can be looked up. And not only that, not only does it show you the drop table, it shows you all the information. Combat level, hit points, what are its stats, max standard hit, main attack style, what are its aggressive stats, what are its defensive stats. There's really high range of the magic. Maybe melee is the way to go, because its melee defense is... A little bit less than uh, the ranged one, or maybe you just want to drag and warhammer it. And then even other information, attack delay, death delay, respawn delay, immune to poison or venom, yes, yes. I love that so much that you can just look up the information on any boss you want. Now as you can see the necromancer ropes are 1 in 230. So you're not gonna see those too often, same with the corrupted staff. Which is uh, the custom staff that it drops, ring of wealth as well, really rare, and the mini necromancer. 
some really cool stuff to say the least. I want to show you guys the uh, corrupted staff as well. Because I absolutely love what they did with the custom uh, animations and whatnot. Let's just go to Rock Crab for example. Just so I can quickly show it to y'all. Bada bing, bada boom. It's kind of similar to a trident, but it has that special animation and whatnot. I don't know, do not know the current exact uh, uses of the staff. Like, does it boost against certain NPC types, or does it deal more damage than a trident, or what the exact deal is? But I did suggest that they would add like little information bubbles. Like, if you have a bank open and you hover over one of the custom items, they would show up like a little description of what the item does or what its effects are and stuff like that. Because I feel like that would be a really, really good feature on a server with this many special items that are never seen before. Of course, you have all your usual player data information and all of that stuff when you go look over here. What are your PK kills, PVM points and all of that good stuff. Uh, different bestiaries, like it worked for almost everything, I think. I'm pretty sure you can just look at barrel chest, for example. Yep, barrel chest found. I do not know what the hard mode would be, but... There it is, barrel chest anchor, 1 in 197. Drops a granite hammer and a granite clamp as well. That's a nice little feature. Nice little way of obtaining the granite clamp in my opinion. And yeah, again, you can look up all the stats, what should you use on it based on its defensive stats and all of that good stuff as well. So that's pretty nice. I think if we do a colon colon edge, it should bring us to Edgeville, which has some pretty unique features in comparison to uh, the regular home area as well. Obviously, you have your edge PKing. And these are actually different shops than at home. At home you get your normal stuff, like an armor shop sells rune armor and gloves and all of that bullshit. But these shops are all based on blood money instead. Blood money melee shop from whips, tentacles, AGSs, even a death pet? Huh. Deja vu, I think I've been in this place before. I don't know what kind of changes are going to be made, but I always think it's a good thing to have certain PvP related items available for shops earnable by PKing. That's always a nice feature. Even ancient maces, oh god. Not looking forward to getting smited by those. Ranged shop, dwarf cannon set even for blood money? Interesting. But I mean, blood money probably isn't just PKing, but also just in general wilderness activity. Certain things like the volcano I was talking about earlier. But yeah, oh, you can just buy ranger boots for blood money. That does make the enchantment a little bit more feasible, I would say. And the shop for magic. Bunch of variety. Imbued heart as well. Quite expensive in the blood money, from what I can tell for now. Master wands, lots of different staffs, Arim robes, all of that good stuff. Elder Chaos robes. Basically, pures, berserkers, and fucking mains. Really, really nice. And I believe this guy over here can enchant your rings as well for blood money. You don't appear to have any broken items. Okay, that's not what I meant. Trade. Use a magic short bow for 4 million blood. Is that in million? The blood money? Or is it just coins? Oh, it might just be coins, not just blood money. I think they were going to add blood money to it as well. So you would have to cho uh, choice between paying in money or in blood money. I'm not entirely sure what route they're going to be taking. You can enchant a berserker ring to a berserker ring eye for 5 mil, for example. You can even uh, change your slayer helmets in here and stuff. I think this is going to be a very wilderness slash pecane driven server, but we've yet to see it does have Iron Man modes and all of that good stuff as well. Also for those wondering why I'm an admin, that's mainly just so I can spawn items and everything. I'm not going to be a, uh, an admin on the main game. Just to clarify, because I figured if I don't, some people will probably make a comment on it. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, I do have to say though, the uh, corrupted staff with the corrupted orb is made, I don't think they. it was in the upgrade table yet, I don't remember seeing it, but you made it by using a Eldritch Orb, a Volatile Orb, and a Harmonized Orb for an enchantment chance to create the, oh yeah, there it is, Corrupted Orb, yeah, 25% chance from all three orbs, so that's a lot of nightmare grinding for a chance to get the Corrupted Orb, but of course it is significantly better in comparison. Honestly, I think there's way too many features in this entire server to go over every single thing right now. I'm really looking forward to the release of it. I do plan to play this server depending on how many videos they hire me for per week. But I do plan to go pretty ham on this. Maybe even make an Iron Man later down the road. But uh, yeah, Dead Man mode type tournaments. You got all of that stuff. Variety of wilderness bosses, a bunch of shops. And just so many small little features that I personally really like. Just to show you guys the shops at home, they're just your basic old stores. Killing store as well. Gotta actually trade it, not talk to. I'm not too much of a fan of this little house though, <laughs> not gonna lie. The fact that you have to open all these uh, 
all these actual doors and stuff. But yeah, basic armors, nothing too crazy that you can buy with money. It's not like you can just casually buy arms in the store unless you PK for it or do wilderness activities to make money for it. Thieving stalls, all of that good stuff. There's just a lot going on. A lot, a lot. The PKing from what I've seen is pretty much a one on one with Old School RuneScape in terms of like the actual mechanics. Not talking about the custom items that exist, because obviously that's different. But it does have like the proper combat system with tick switches and pit and all of that good stuff for the heavy PKers out there. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Bunch of shops, herbler stuff, basic stuff. Man, there's just so fucking much. Oh, yeah, the donator shop. I feel like a lot of you guys might be interested in that one donator shop so you can buy like uh, certain items with it like derricks and stuff i did suggest they would take out the prayer scrolls because honestly i feel like that really devalues the chambers of gazarix honestly that shouldn't be in there um but other than that you know fighter doors or defender the rest is just shortcuts but in my opinion you shouldn't be able to donate for a rare chambers of gazarix drop and you have your mystery boxes of course they had some really OP items in there, like Koda ones and shit, but they took those out after I opened a bunch of them. I was like, yo, this might be a little broken, bro. And he was like, yep, I thought I already removed that. So that got deleted as well. No idea what this Founder Imp is. That looks really cool. Find item, Founder Imp. Let's have a look. Is it a pet? Yes, it's a pet. That's pretty cool. Those little donator pets that follows you around. Probably just a bit of a flex based on the 150 donation ticket uh, prize it has. Hey, one of the owners logged in, Shinatobe. He's been doing a lot of really cool stuff as well. You can open the website, which I accidentally did in another tab. <laughs> did not mean to do that. Decanter, votes of course, nice little vote store, ornament kits. You can even buy an infernal cape with votes. Nice little feature for those who really can't do the infernal, like your dumbass metal Raymond over here. <coughs> Because uh, that's not my forte. Obelisk destination scrolls, you can change the obelisk. Unlocking target teleports. Really nice that you can unlock so many things with votes. Even a chumpy chick. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, crystal keys, royal seed pot, herb boxes, gem uh, bags, looting bags, room pouches. Just genuinely really cool stuff, but not busted either, in my opinion. You can get some of the halos here. The Guffix, Zamorak, and Saradomen which makes me wonder about how you obtain all the other ones because I didn't see them in any of the other stores but honestly after the release I'm sure we'll figure a lot of things out together and uh, we'll go from there with all of that stuff Grace here as well, trade him freaking uh, graceful armor, amulet packs, crystal key chest yeah honestly I think I've shown the vast majority of things that I really wanted to show there's a lot of things I'm looking forward to and I hope this uh, video gets you guys excited as well. Giant Rock is probably the only custom boss I haven't shown off, except for the Wilderness bosses. You know what? I will get those shown off. I just need a minute to uh, contact one of the uh, owners to spawn me one so I can show you guys that. Giant Rock isn't anything too crazy. This isn't like the Necromancer. It's a pretty easy boss and it has some like more so basic skilling supply drops and whatnot. Uh, can we actually look it up? Giant Rock. Yep. Giant Rock. Oh yeah, it can't do it in combat, that sucks. Oh, it does actually deal damage through prayer, that's interesting. In my opinion, that's always a good one. Your pet automatically banks. This is a banking pet? What? <laughs> Wait, hold up. This pet banks your shit? Holy fuck. Kinda hope it doesn't work in the willy, but that's way better than I was expecting. I thought it was cosmetic, bro. 150 donator tickets for a pet that banks your shit. God damn. Can drop clue scrolls, elites, dragon pickaxe, ranger tunics, fremenic kilt, some really nice pure items, and then some more basic supplies, run long, so just alcaballs, gold ores, super combat pots. I'm gonna fucking die. Why did that hit a 44? God damn. Huh, I only just now found out about this, but actually, there's quite a few, not just custom pets, but also pets that have abilities. Quite a few of them, actually. For example, the Mimic Junior pet, which I fucking love. Look at that thing. <laughs> I love the fact that they made that into a pet. I've always been such a fan of that NPC. But basically, this pet automatically banks all clue scrolls for you. Sends all your clue scroll drops to your bank automatically. Obtainable as a medium clue reward with a drop rate of 1 in a 1000 or by buying it from other players. So a few pets are tradable if they are so-called legendary pets. Um, such as, for example, the Neve Junior pet. Which gives, let me check it real quick. Um, grants plus 5 slayer points on every task completed. Obtainable in the Slayer Reward Store or by buying it from other players. 
The death pet grants an extra item kept on death, for example. So that's pretty cool as well. <laughs> Who doesn't know this bad bitch? Um, same old, same old. Let me have a look. Phoenix pet grants 10% range of damage. A little busted in my opinion. Obtainable by, by doing Winter Todd with a drop rate of 1 in a thousand. I think that might be a little too strong personally. 10% range damage from Winter Todd, but okay, it is what it is. A little Nightmare pet grants 10% smite damage. That is pretty sick as well. So the Nightmare pet obtainable from obviously killing the Nightmare will uh, add 10% smite bonus to your total smite. Stacks with the smite prayer and weapon special attacks that have a smite perk. So damn, that's gonna be hella strong for actually smiting stuff. Little destruction pet, a little destructor right here. Gives 10% strength bonus, which is extremely strong as well. Um, gain from the Avatar of Destruction world boss with a drop rate of 1 in 1500. So really hard to obtain. Uh, we have the little creator over here. Did not see the pet perk for that one, but I'm sure it has something probably, or maybe it's not added all of them yet. Eva, little penis or the pet penance queen actually doubles your experience gained. Uh, the collector imp that we saw earlier actually bangs all your items, or the founder imp as it's called right now. Maybe they'll plan to rename it. The KBD pet grants an extended anti fire perk, gives you the same effect as an extended anti fire potion. So yeah, really cool, and then all the skilling pets have individual effects, basically all experience related. Baby Jinchampa pet grants 10% extra experience in Hunter, Beaver pet in Woodcutting, Heron pet in Fishing, Rock Golf pet in Mining, etc, etc. Pretty self-explanatory. The Herb pet grants 10% extra experience in Herb Lore, so not in Hunter, but that kind of makes sense as well. Really nice features, I've always been a fan of those kind of pets. This one doesn't have any uh, stated effects, but I love the way it looks. I have no idea what their plan is for that, how you obtain it and all of that good stuff, but it's a really dope design for the pet nonetheless. Pretty cool stuff. Alright, so let's get into the showcase of the actual world event bosses. We're just gonna force spawn them in, not actually like uh, the event actually spawning them properly. Oh, <laughs> this one isn't attackable, that is not what is meant to happen right here. What do you pray against it? I can auto retaliate and it automatically skulls you. Get fucked. God damn. But for now, I can only auto retaliate to it, which obviously isn't the case when it properly spawns. This isn't a real boss meant to be soloed anyway, so I'm gonna go god mode in a second so I don't take damage. But look at this. These are normal hits with this bow that only works in the wildy. It is extremely powerful to say the least. But once I type in god mode, my range bonus goes up to 255, so I start hitting a lot higher. So I thought I would show the normal hits a little bit first. So hitting 211s and whatnot, that is not something the boat normally is able to do. That is simply because of the god mode. So you have the Avatar of Destruction, you have the uh, Avatar of Creation, I believe, and the Lava... the Brutal Lava Dragon or King Lava Dragon, something like that. Here we have the Avatar of Destruction as well. Wonder if you can just pray melee against it, but the fact that it skulls you is pretty goddamn OP. Makes it a little bit more rough to bring valuable items as it is in the wilderness, and you'll have a lot of people going to these boss spawns, most likely. The drop tables are extremely lucrative after all. But yeah, Avatar of Destruction doesn't seem to be dealing too much damage, and that's not because of the Godmo. Well, I am 254 death, and have plenty of HP. And last but not least, the Brutal Lava Dragon. This one actually can hit really hard, so you're gonna need those anti-fire potions. It seems like with my god mode on, I don't really take a lot of damage from anything. It does hit occasionally, as you can see. But yeah, those are the three wilderness event bosses. They spawn in different parts of the wildy, so not all at the same place and all of that good stuff. I thought it was worth showing them off nonetheless. Basically like a resized, slightly remodeled uh, lava dragon. Yeah, pretty cool nonetheless. Has some really nice item drops. This one specifically I really like, but I think all of them have their own unique special things to begin with. Really, really looking forward to this one. I don't think there's much left to show and this video is already getting really, really long at this point. But I hope it brings you guys some hype for the actual release. Sure does for me. I'm really, really looking forward to this server. Uh, can't wait to see what it has in store for us all when the actual release is there. 25th of June is when the release will be. There's no time yet because it is a week in advance that I'm recording it, but once a timer becomes available I'll make sure to pin it in the comments or something similar to that. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I'll check you guys within the next one. Yeah, I think that's everything. Peace out boys, talk to y'all later.